Hi, it's been a while since I uh, made a new video, since I felt I had something to say to add to what I've said before, or to uh, elaborate further, or uh, give uh, new related insights. So now at this time, I think I have something to offer. This is December 5th, 2024, although it doesn't matter when it is that you're seeing this, it remains as uh, relevant and as uh, true and useful as it is in this moment now. And um, I'm making some notes for myself here. I'm in um, New Jersey. We just had the first snow of, of the winter season, though it's not officially winter. Had a little bit of snow flying around last night. I actually I like snowfall. I like watching snowfall. It's not necessarily uh, convenient to drive in it. I know a lot of people are very afraid of it, but uh, it really is quite beautiful, I think. Anyway, first thing I'd like to elaborate on, uh, again, everything I'm going to speak about now, I've mentioned to some degree in other videos, but the subject of when we want to get rid of bad feelings, and mostly shock and anxiety, it can be sadness and other things too. It's just a matter of what I call spiritual digestion. Uh, instinctively, we try to push back on and resist and deflect and, and find ways to characterize or solve our feelings. But feelings are simply things that only resolve through being felt. And 95% uh, of what we need to process to resolve a feeling is in all the effort and feeling put into resisting the feeling, pushing back on it. Uh, as I've mentioned in earlier videos, the simplest technique which works remarkably well is simply what I call spiritual digestion, which is allow yourself to be completely relaxed and effortless and just let that feeling express through you, allow it to be fully felt. Sort of like drinking a hot liquid and feeling the heat disperse through you. Just let it pass through you. Allow it to fully digest and absorb within you. And uh, that can be remarkably easy. I'm very, very uh, thankful to those of you who have uh, applied my earlier videos, including those where I actually run you through it in the video, and we're going to do something like that in a minute or two. Um, a number of people have gotten back to me to say, wow, that worked. I tried that video. I did, did that video along with you of just spiritually digesting, letting those feelings just simply express and pass through me, and that really works very well. It does. And as I was starting to say, 95% of what we need to digest isn't the anxiety or, or the shock or the, or the uh, sadness, but it's the resistance. It's all the effort, all the energy that we've been putting into, that you've been putting into to fight back, to try to make a feeling go away, to push back on it or deflect it. And that energy is actually inspired by and infused with the same fear or anxiety that you're trying to fight back. <laughs> so uh, what you need to do is allow the digestion within you of uh, letting all of that effort within you uh, unlock, open up, and uh, express through you. So that's the first part of what we're going to do. So. I mean, the most uh, uh, universal uh, feeling is anxiety. It could be called a desperation. Uh, and the basic feeling of anxiety is that you won't be loved and accepted. It won't be part of a togetherness with others, be abandoned, left by the side of the road, uh, not, not accepted, not connected with, not regarded. That's a, a universal anxiety that uh, we all need to process over and over different ways and different levels. And 
And uh, that anxiety is something we always push back on very hard because we don't want to feel it. Feeling it is what makes it resolve. <laughs> Allowing it to be felt, not putting any effort into feeling anything. The way we work, the way I work, very dramatically successful in sessions. You can see Bobby over there getting comfortable on his throne. <laughs> It's simply allowing what is present to be present within you and express. That really is the ultimate solution to everything. Not to solve it by doing something about it or coming up with a different way to look at it or being philosophical about it, <clears throat> but simply allowing whatever is present to be present and have the expression of that presence. And that goes for feelings as well as anything else. So, because 95% of that anxiety, what we need to process, is actually, is actually the resistance to it. Let's uh, do a demonstration right now. Let's just take your anxiety, whatever it may be related to, however it expresses, that feeling of anxiety that for you is accessible, that you can notice right now. And first of all, allow yourself to be completely relaxed and effortless. Relax every part, every muscle, every fiber of your body and your being to allow that flow that is within you to be unsuppressed and allow that energy to pass through you and specifically the energy and the effort that you've been constantly maintaining to try and fight away that, that undesirable feeling of anxiety or if it's another undesirable feeling, that'll work too. Just allow that resistance to now open up, that pushback within you that you've been generating. Now, you're not generating it now, but you're, you're welcoming the flow and the release of all that energy and effort through you and the feeling of anxiety or fear that is the building block, that is the essence of what that resistance itself is. Relax, allow it to pass through you and be fully felt. There'll be tremendous relief you start to recognize how exhaustive it's been to keep pushing back on your feeling. It's been a never-ending struggle, but not anymore. Just letting that counter-effort, that pushback within you, letting it go through you now, allowing it to release, feel it, expressing and flowing through your being. Just have the feeling of that resisting. You can pause this video for as long as you need to till you feel like that is complete. One of the advantages of having sessions with me is that when people do this on their own, it works very well, but they tend not to complete the action. They let it get to a certain degree of comfort, and then they discontinue the, what they're doing. So it's up to you, but if you want to take it all the way, just take it all the way until there's just this wonderful feeling of, of peace, of relaxation, No presence of the anxiety. Again, the resistance to it and the anxiety within that resistance. Just feel it all releasing through. Now, when you feel the relief of this released through you and the comfort of being, now allow the same thing to occur with anything that's remaining, anything that is not digested within you, of that feeling of fear, anxiety, shock, sadness, whatever it may be. Allow that to now complete a flow through you. Have all the feeling and sensation, and we do this, that includes any physical sensations. You know, uh, there are certain physiological responses. If you feel some part of your body tightening up, you feel a tenseness in any part of your body, that is the uh, uh, physical expression of resistance. That's what it is. So anytime you feel that, especially in this process, relax it. Notice that you're doing that. Let it release. Let it relax. Continue to just have all the feeling that is making itself accessible to you now. See, what we call your spiritual compass, which is this instinct to present within yourself exactly what needs to process at this time. There's a flow to it of whatever feeling or energy that needs to be digested so that when you allow it to express through you, 
it is actually the perfect rate of flow for you to digest it. It's not too much, and it's not slower than it needs to be either. It's a perfect rate of flow for you because it's regulated by your own spiritual instinct. Allow this to fully occur. And another part of what I wanted to mention today is uh, one key system of resistance that we all use is what I call resolutely held protective attitudes. I used to call them stubbornly held protective attitudes and that word is accurate but stubborn has a certain connotation like you're, you're being bad or wrong in some way. So I, I use the word resolutely which works just as well. Resolutely held protective attitudes. These things often come up in a session with a client when we're doing this spiritual resistance. If you start to feel like, I can't get more of it, it's, it's not moving, okay, behind every I can't, there's an I won't. And a resolutely held protective attitude is an expression of I won't. I won't allow this. I won't let this be. I won't accept this. I won't let myself feel this. I won't engage with something or someone Okay, a, a resolutely held uh, protective attitude is always uh, an enforced no-fly zone for you about something. And where you have these enforced no-fly zones of these protective attitudes, you actually erected uh, a force field, if you will, there that prevents you from being able to have and digest the related feelings. So it, often these come up. One sign of these is when somebody cannot uh, uh, continue to the uh, spiritual digestion. There's like a block there. That's what a block to something is. It's a resolutely held protective attitude. In psychology, it's referred to as a defense mechanism, another valid way to put it. I have my former background in Scientology, and they use the term service fact or service facsimile um, because the person uses a facsimile being an image or a picture and the idea that it serves the person in some way. Well, it's intended to serve the person in some way, but uh, ultimately it's detrimental. And uh, it's really superficially understood in, in Scientology. And I believe uh, not uh, f as deeply necessarily understood in, in, in psychology all the time either. Anyway, uh, there's a specific way that I use uh, that uh, works extremely well to get these resistance blocks out of the way. And uh, it's a series of, of steps, doesn't take long at all to do, okay? And the first part of it is to allow the physical digestion of the feelings that are infused into the attitude. The attitude can be anything, but uh, it's sort of a, I need this to protect me from a danger, you know, and the, the danger um, can be uh, articulated as a failure. I, I need to protect me from failure, protect me from embarrassment, uh, protect me from losing, protect me from, uh, from somebody hurting me, you know, but... Uh, they're intended to protect a person from feeling something that they already have within them that they really don't want to feel. And of course, if you protect yourself from feeling something, then it never goes away because you're never going to spiritually digest it. You've got a solution, and that solution actually holds that feeling in place. That's the liability of solutions like that. So it needs to be gotten out of the way. So the way uh, we do this in, in uh, very effectively in my work is first to articulate the phrase that best says that particular idea of that attitude. Uh, I'm never gonna let this happen again. Don't do this. Um, this is the way to be about that. You know, <clears throat> anytime you hold in place an attitude or, or sort of a personality about something, um, you just blind yourself and, and uh, hide yourself and, and uh, take yourself out of the game and substitute this presence or attitude 
and uh, you're just not even there and that's no way to live but we resort to this for many things because we don't know what we how we can simply spiritually digest things so the first step of this this particular form of resistance that we're calling a resolutely held protective attitude is to spiritually digest the feelings that are infused into the attitude which commonly are fear anxiety and then from there we we take a look at the and process, digest the related experiences, the experiences related to that attitude, the uh, moments across your life, across your existence, where uh, that attitude seemed to be getting triggered or needed or relevant. And uh, then take a look at what the consequences are to your life, what they have been of, of having maintained this quote unquote protective attitude all the ways it's limited you, prevented you from being present with people, engaging with people, experiencing a better relationship with people, all the ways that it has closed you off and held you uh, in a very, very narrow band of existence that isn't the best for you. And I just simply ask you what the consequences have been, that's all. And <clears throat> at first, one or two positives may come up. Well, it did protect me from blah, blah, blah. But in the end, you're going to realize you didn't need protection. You needed to have that experience and digest it. And so you could then be whole instead of pushing away and trying to separate parts of yourself from yourself. That's no that's not way to live. We all need to integrate everything and become more whole. So anyway, that's the next step is to just uh, take a look at all the consequences. And once I start asking for these consequences, you start to realize just how pervasively holding this quote-unquote protective attitude in place has, uh, has prevented you from living, prevented you from having the life you want, having the feelings that you want, having the relationships with others that you want, how it's blocked you off, how uh, unfortunate it's really been for you. And then after that, then you reconsider the attitude. You reconsider having it, maintaining it, or holding on to it. And the only times in which it's not then gone for you and the world opens up and you feel so much better and more whole is sometimes there's one or two underlying uh, resolutely held protective attitudes that support that attitude and then it's just a matter of going through the same procedure with those. And uh, I've, I've noticed for a very long time that... Uh, what we could call identities, uh, personas, uh, selves that we take on, or in some cases have cast on us by, by others. Um, and these are also, uh, these are actually a specific kind of resolutely held protective attitude that's much more pervasive because it's sort of like a whole persona, a whole personality that we find ourselves taking on. Sometimes you see this in other people, they're being a a certain person and you know sometimes you wish they just relax that and just be present and not uh, put that substitute presence out there and sometimes you even recognize that you do that but how do you undo that well the interesting thing is well that is in itself its own form of complex and pervasive resolutely held protective attitude it's commonly held in place by another specific, resolutely held protective attitude that basically says, I need to be this way to protect myself. I need to be this way uh, to avoid danger. I need to be this way to be safe. And uh, there are steps that uh, I use to completely um, reverse engineer, uh, disarm and uh, resolve and remove these uh, substitute personalities that we take on. You know, we all just really want to be comfortable in our own skin and be ourselves. And we've taken on attitudes that say you, you can't do that. Or you can't do that now. You can't do that in this environment or that environment. When you're in a work environment, when you're in front of somebody of the opposite sex, when you're in front of a group of people, with a group of people, you, you can't expose a vulnerability. You need to be this other way. And uh, really, that's just very detrimental. You can just learn through the techniques we have available to us that I use to really enjoy your presence and that of others and that, that co-presence of being along with others 
without all these protective characterizations and attitudes, making things uncomfortable and stilted and artificial and all of that. And so very often the, the key to resolving and processing a, a false self, a persona that you've taken on, and we all have a few, more than a few, is to go through the steps of processing whatever resolutely held protective attitude says, I can't let go of this. You know, I, I've noticed for years in the processing of identities, which I've uh, always helped people to do successfully, and it's such a spiritual liberation to be free of that shell. Oh, it, it so is. Um, is uh, that the, the, what sticks it, what, what makes it clingy and what holds it in place is some attitude that says, I can't be without this, it won't be safe. <laughs> And uh, when you go through the steps of processing that attitude, you arrive at that point that happens with any resolutely held protective attitude. Where how does maintaining that attitude seem to you now? And the answer is, very often it's laughter. It's ridiculous. It's silly. It doesn't help me at all. It's kind of like, it seemed like a good idea at the time. Yeah, but it wasn't. <laughs> it's laughable when you look at it in retrospect. Uh, and... Uh, one of the key moments of fully processing something, you've really gotten the fear and the anxiety behind you, you've processed it, is when you can openly laugh at how silly you've been about something. Because we are silly beings, but it's just something to laugh about and enjoy life. It really is. When you arrive at that point of laughing, at that point of it, it seemed like a good idea at the time, um, there, there, there's something very delightful about recognizing some foible that you've had that held in place that you didn't need to you know and once you get past uh, uh, processing whatever fears you have of vulnerability or being embarrassed or unaccepted which we do get those out of the way we process those things it feels so good to just laugh about it and you become so much more whole at that moment and that's a big part of what I have to offer and God, I take pleasure in bringing you to that point about so many things, one thing and then the next. It's a series of spiritual liberations. So that's the update on uh, the uh, newest and, and more clarifying information that I have to offer. And now, with what we've done in this session, you processed that resistance. That felt pretty damn relieving, didn't it? did that. And then whatever fear or anxiety uh, was there that you were resisting. Like I said, uh, people uh, can have a certain amount of success doing this on your own, but that can be wonderful. And I sure love to see you doing that. I sure love to see my clients doing this out of their sessions and the people that just uh, email me or message me to say, well, that worked really well. Thank you. It's so wonderful for me. It's such a gratifying feeling to know you're, you're making use of this. You're finding how you can benefit from this and become more whole and uh, you strip away the, the artificialities, the, uh, uh, what's meant to be protective but really just takes you out of your wholeness. It's a very gratifying feeling. And uh, if you want to take these things all the way, go deeper, you know, have sessions with me. Um, just uh, get in touch with me. Uh, my website information is available when you look at this video. And um, my rates at this point in time vary depending on how much time you're committing yourself to. Uh, the sessions can be 20 minutes. They can be even longer than uh, two hours sometimes. It's just taking something to the point of unraveling it to a spiritual liberation never leaving a feeling of something being unresolved before we end the session. And that works, and that's what happens. And I charge by the time used, not by the session. So uh, uh, the uh, rates depend on whether you're going just, if you're just going by the session, okay, it's a higher rate, okay? If you're paying for um, uh, 10 hours worth in advance, it's a lower rate. If you're, well, I've, I've trained about, I don't know, a couple dozen practitioners 
to be able to do this with other people. And that's the lowest rate. The lowest rate currently is approximately $145 an hour. And you can get that rate if you're going to train to uh, do this with other people. And you can also get this rate if you pay for enough uh, time in advance. And uh, like I said, there's a sliding scale depending on whether you're just paying by the session or by, a, by a 10 hours or more hours and just contact me, we can work it out. I do, I'm very comfortable with payment plans. You know, we can, we can work that out too if you'd like to. So you can take advantage of a lower rate and uh, happy to help you to do that. Uh, any other questions you may have, just get in touch. And uh, I really hope you take full advantage of what I have to offer in this video. And uh, I'd love to work with you if you are so inclined. Hope you enjoyed this video. See you again.